Well, Talking Church, we're back again with my dad, Pastor Rob. Last week, we had a crazy, amazing episode with Ryan sharing his story of freedom. Unbelievable. Every time I hear his story, I get choked up. Mm -hmm. I'm just in awe that uh, we had any part of this and that God used us. Amazing. If you haven't heard it, you have to listen to that yes, one. Yes, yes, it's amazing. And I'm I'm excited for today because we just can continue to build off this series of, we talked about calendar hacks, you talked yeah. about ministry longevity. And this is a question that we get a lot, but it's how do you say no? And I'll be honest, I don't know that you're always the best at this. And I'm so the you're, worst. You're a good person to teach how you've, how you've <laughs> learned to do it. Because some people are just like, oh, it's easy for me to say no. But for you, it's not easy to say no. It's and not. so you can talk about how there's ways that you've learned and you're a recovering yes man. And I'm still a yes man. <laughs> why, why Why do you say yes to everything? <laughs> you know, first of all, I have the energy for it. And so I want to do it because I have the energy and I'm literally not tired doing it. Secondly, um, it's it makes you interesting. The more things you do, it, it's in, you're like, it's interesting experiences. So I want to say yes to everything. And then um, I look at this, like, I just want to, give a good return. Like I've been so blessed. God saved me and I want to do as much as I can for his glory. And so I'm trying to say yes to everything. And I, so I, that, that's why I just want to say like, yes, like I want to do it. I want to help your church move forward. I want to help your conference. I want to help your nation. I want to help you as a family. I, I want to say yes to everything except for helping people move their house. That, you're like, <laughs> that's the one thing I don't want to say yes to. Well, I need help next week moving <laughs> well, my house. Do. That's why I said that. But I don't like it anyways, yeah. but I will do it for you. Well, some of the stuff is at your house, so I you want to get I'll out. help. I'll yes. help. Um, you, you have a list of things that you just, you just shared with me like 30 seconds ago before we started recording. You said, yeah. I have a list of all these things. Cause I told you we were talking about the power of saying no, let's, let's go through those. I'll interrupt you throughout the way, but let's go through some of those things. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy interrupting and asking well, further questions. Let's stay on that same theme that we we're just on. I think you can say yes to a lot more things than you realize. Okay. I think a lot of people are like, ah, oh, I got to learn how to say no. No, you got to learn how to say yes to the right things and a lot of things. I think there's more in you. Um, and I'm not picking on anybody right now, but like I've talked to a lot of rural church pastors, okay? And I said, if I was in a rural area, I would pastor multiple churches. Like you preach one time and like preach it again. It gets better the second time. Preach it again. It gets better the third time. I do circuit riding preacher and go nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, one o'clock. And it would, I'd have three income streams there. And I, you know, it's like, you could say yes to a lot more than you realize. There's more in you to say yes to. Um, now you have to learn uh, how to balance and you have to learn that if you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to another. But I just wanted to start with that. Like you can say yes. And I'm thinking about the episode I did with the calendar. It's like, fill your calendar with a bunch of yeses so you know what you could say no to. Right. That would be my first thing. And and challenge yourself. Come on. Do I have the energy to say yes to this? And um, well, yeah. Well, it's interesting because if you get out of rhythm of working out and then you go work out once, your muscles get really, really tired because you haven't right. worked out in a while. But if you're in the rhythm of working out and you do the same workout, you might not even get tired. You have to push yourself to the next level. So I think in ministry, and I've seen this being on staff for seven years, you grow in your capacity because of the yeses you say yes to, not because of the no's. If you're always protecting yourself, you know, I was, I was just talking about this, uh, about the podcast. The, the amount of people listening on the very first year was exciting to me. I would have been blown away if the number of people were listening that are listening now but I'm not satisfied. I want to go to the next level because I want right. to reach more people. I want this to be to impact more pastors. And so I do think there is something that when you when you start to see the winds of of saying yes, it it can be addicting in a bad way, but it can also be addicting in a good way to know that I'm achieving. And we're both Enneagram threes, yep. we're achievers. Well, and you're building your life, your ministry, your success, your business, if you're listening to this, with yeses the first part of your life, you're, you're yes, 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 yes. And you say yes to everything because you're building. And then as time goes on, 
you have too many yeses and you have to figure out what to say yes to. And then you start saying no to things and the power is in your no. And you switch. The power for probably the first 20 years of ministry for me was in the yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then it, now the power in my life is in the no. So so do you think some people maybe are saying, my, I need to say no more when they're not yet in that season yet? Do you think? Right, right. They're still in a yes season and they've got to say yes to it. Now, what's sad though is the yes season is usually when you have young kids, you're young married, you're younger in your job. You're saying the yes season of your career. Yes. Yeah. You're saying yes, and you have to say yes, but you have all these other things that are also saying, say yes to me, dad, say yes to me, spouse, say yes to me, family, say yes to me. I mean, and trust me, these yeses come with all sorts of uh, problems. Like I remember I was traveling and starting to get out more. And one of my brothers, uh, I don't know which one it was, but it was probably Rick, but he was like, you love, you know, John Maxwell more than you love your family. And then my mom jumps in and, you know, grandma, those of that listen to the podcast, she's like, that's right. You love missions more than you love your children. And I mean, it was just like everybody was piling on me. And I was like, I'm just trying to build the kingdom and, and no, I don't love them more. But what they saw is they were getting my yeses and I was saying no to family dinner, no to birthday parties, no to, you know what I mean? And so the stress of, it's a, it's a balance. You've got to know what to say yes to and say yes to a lot how, of things. How do you know in that example, how do you know when you're saying yes to the wrong thing to where you're, you're starting to say yes to the things that you want to do, right? but doesn't necessarily are the things that you should say yes to. How, how do you know? Yeah, you have to look at, is this, well, first of all, if you don't have a mission statement of who you are as a person and where your gifts are, that right off the bat, that'll help you filter it down. Because like right in my mission statement, um, it says that I'm an adventurer with the Lord. Okay, so I love to travel. I'm an adventurer. I want the next thing. But it says, especially in leadership development, kingdom builders and missions. So I have a filter right now. Is it leadership, kingdom builders, missions? So I'll give you a case in point, and this is probably going to get us off track a little bit, but I was asked to be on the board for Convoy of Hope. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. There's a lot of street credibility in being at Convoy of Hope on the board. When I go into the marketplace, I can say I'm on the board of Convoy of Hope, this, this, this. And it was really kind of like, I was thinking how it would build me and my credibility or my resume but I submit this to the elder board of our church. And I said, what do you think about me serving on the board for Convoy of Hope? And they looked at me and they said, we never hear you talk about Convoy of Hope. We never hear you talk about disaster relief or feeding programs. Not that that's not in your heart and that's not good, but you're consumed with leadership development, kingdom builders and missions. Which, and I was just like, <laughs> which is so interesting because I think we're the number one giving church to Convoy of Hope. We're the first church so, to ever give a million dollars right. to them. And so it's like, it, it, when when they say we never hear you talk about it, what they're saying is that's not your personal heart. Correct. My disaster. gift. You're saying I believe in that need. Yes. So I will fund that, but that's not my area to accomplish. Yes. Yeah. And so I said no to it but I wanted to say yes. So you got to say, does it match your gift and who you are? And then the second thing is, is it good soil to invest in? So I'll give you another one. I said yes to preaching at a smaller church in New York. And I had a friend say, why are you preaching there? Like, that's a small church. And I said, it's good soil. I believe in this guy. He, I, I don't care that it's a couple hundred. I don't care that you know, whether there's an honorarium or not, I'm going there because I want to use my gift to help this church. And I think I can move the needle for them. So you're looking at, can it move the needle? It's like, does it match your gift? Can it move the needle for the kingdom? And then you're looking at, um, is there a nudge of the Holy Spirit that's saying, do this, do this, do this, um, that you say yes. And then I'll throw another category. I'm thinking about Jesus where his mom comes to him and says, hey, these people have run out of wine. And he's like, no, nope, not my time. She's like, do it. You know, sometimes there's people that are spiritual authority in your life that say, no, you need to say yes to this. 
-hmm. You need to say yes to this one. And so those are things that help me to know what to say yes to and then no to. And sometimes I'm saying no to things. They're like, I know you love to golf. I know you. And I'm like, I know. Wow. But it doesn't move the needle and I can't make the event and I have to say no to this one in order to say yes to yours. I have to. I have to say no. There, there was a, a golf course that we were playing. It was a top 100 golf course. And just something was going on with Mac, my wife. And she was like, you can go. It's fine. You know, I'll figure it out. And I thought, you know what? I'm supposed to stay and help with this thing. And I stayed and it ended up getting resolved in about an hour. But I had already canceled the flight and missed that one. And then I went on the next one. And it was like, oh, man, I could have gone, right? But I think the, the reality is, no, I made the right decision. Right. But just because it changed doesn't mean I made the wrong one. No, I made the right decision. Right. But I missed out on the golf course. And I think that sometimes people are so caught up in, I can't, I said that I was doing that, so I have to be good on my word. And I think that you can change your yes and no. Talk about the how you've, how you've gone back. Like, I think people struggle with that. Well, I, I gave him my word and I said I would do it, but but this other thing has come up that's clearly the thing that fits into who you are better but you've already said yes. What would be a way that you would actually go go back on? Again, it sounds bad well, when you say it that way. I would say you got to do it with plenty of warning time for the group because if you said yes to somebody and then you're backing out on them, you got to give them plenty of time. The second thing is you own the obligation of finding the replacement for them because, um, well, I'll give you a case in point. Uh, Chris Hodges was supposed to speak in New Zealand and this is at a time where he was struggling with heart palpitations and thinking he had major issues. Yeah, his book, his book Out of the Cave is about that, yeah. And, and, and he called me and said, I need you to go to New Zealand in six days. Can you do it? They asked me for a list of people that could fill my spot. They picked you. Can you please cover for your friend? And I said, done, done. And I literally flew to New Zealand, preached five times in five days, and then came back. I mean, it was exhausting, but I was like, I've got to help my friend meet his obligation. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to cancel on somebody, you have to help them meet the obligation. Now, if you give them plenty of lead time, they're like, ah, we'll ask other people. But if you don't, you've got to help them and offer a solution that, that's legit, not like, hey, uh, you know, we can send our junior high youth pastor. You know I mean? <laughs> it, and sorry, junior high youth pastor, whoever you are. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? You have to help them solve it. Um, there's been other times where I'm like, hey, logistically, it won't work. Like I just canceled on something the other day in Kenya, I think. I think it was Kenya. I forget. But it was a, a country in Africa, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. There were supposed to be two meetings there that made it worth it, and I was supposed to do a third one on the way back. The second and the third got canceled, and I was like, I can't go there just for that. And so I called them plenty of lead time. I said, if you need names, they're like, no, we're good. So plenty of lead time if you say no. Um, and, and then if it's a real need or a real problem, expressing the humanity of it, like, hey, you got to understand, our child had this, my wife had this, my daughter had this, this happened giving them the real humanity of it helps to, for them to understand. Yeah, I think the more real it is, the more people understand. Like the, And you're actually going to share some of the, the points you said where you don't want to share all the information when you're saying no. Yeah. But I think on the other side, when you're pulling out of something, you do kind of have to be pretty forward with, hey, this is what's going on. I, I want to be honest about that. But when it comes to getting back to your list of, of yep. saying no, what are some of the other things on your list? Oh, yes, no weekends. This is really practical for pastors. This one's going to help you. Um, you have to have a yes and a no weekend. So me, I'm saying yes to everything. Yes to everything. And here's something I learned. Rich people, when the weather is perfect, want to do whatever would be the fun thing to do. So if it's a perfect day to go boating, a rich person's like, let's go boating today. It's perfect with no warning. Or a rich person's like, let's go to the theme park today. It's weather's going to be perfect after church. And you're thinking, no, no, no. I save up for the year and we go on the discount day and we go at 8 a.m. and we squeeze every ounce of it out. And I noticed that these people would say, no, let's go. I'll pay. And me, I'm like. the conditions are right. The yeah. conditions were right. And so I'm like, let's go. And I was yes to everything. And my wife, Becca, your mom, would be like, wait, 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 wait. You said you were going to do this with us. And... And then here's what I was doing. I would 
say yes to the person like, oh, that'd be awesome. We'd love to go boating with you. And then I go, let me check with Becca. And then I go check with Becca and she'd be like, no, you, you, you saw we're doing this with the kids. And then I'd go back to that family and I'd say, sorry, yeah, Becca, I forgot. And, you know, she's like, well, you're making me look like the buzzkill. I'm the bad person. This is not going to help our marriage. You need yes and no weekends. That's how we solved it. So I knew going into the church weekend, yes, this is a weekend I can say yes to anything and Becca's good with it. Or this is a weekend that it's a no weekend. And when the family invites me, I say, oh, sorry, we're booked today. We can't, I can't get, we already got something planned. Sorry. And then I wasn't making my wife look like the bad person. Right. I was coming prepared with a yes or a no. That made a huge difference in our life to have yes and no weekends. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned before how when, when somebody asks you to do something and you say no and you tell them the reason why, oftentimes they'll try to think. They start to argue with yeah. you. Well, that's why they, you don't tell them, like if you say, oh, sorry, I can't make it. Um, you can't even say there's something on my schedule or whatever. And if you, the more detail you give them, the more they argue with you. Because if you say, oh, sorry, I can't on Thursday, I'm meeting with my family. They're like, well, your family's there every day. Your family, you know what I mean? You just got to say, no, I can't. You don't need to give them all the reasons. Because they they can't argue with a no. They can be sad, but they can argue with a reason. So you don't give them the reason. Right. And then also the reason in their mind sets up a pecking order. Oh, so they like this better than me. Right. Or they would do it for that group, but not that group. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's very helpful. What else you got? What other well, I was thinking about this, like, I've had to say no to people that want my time. Um, we have people in the church, like, I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with you. Hey, I'd love to have lunch with you. I'd love to meet with you. And I want to meet with everybody. I've had people outside of our church. I had a guy in another church say, I would love for you to mentor me because my pastor's not very good at mentoring. And, uh, but I'd love for you to mentor me. And I said, I'm so sorry. I can't. Like I have a staff of over a hundred that I don't have enough time. Like I, I love that you are leaning into me and you could come to our staff meeting or something, but like, I'm going to give the one-on-one -on -one to the people that are on my team. I just have to I have a limited amount, but with people in the church, I've said, if you're leading or lifting, I want to spend time with you. And what do I mean? If you're leading a ministry or you're lifting the load financially, I want to spend time with you. But when somebody's not leading a ministry around our church or really helping or lifting the load financially, I, I, I don't have time. You know, people say like, I want to have lunch. I remember once I was having lunch with this guy and he's like, I want to spend time. I'd love to do this. And I said, can I be honest with you? You're not leading any ministries. I checked your giving, like you're not giving. Like I want to spend time with people that are leading and lifting. So you have a choice. You can either lead or lift if you want to spend time with me, but you can't keep just consuming and think that I'm here to just do that. Yeah. And I think that on, on one side, people would say, well, isn't that our role as a pastor? But I think no, I have a bunch of pastors that could do that. <laughs> yeah. But but I also think the care is is unique as well to where a lot of these people want your time, but people are not always willing to share what they want to meet with you about. And it's like you you have a rule that if somebody you don't know reaches out and says, I want to meet with you, and they won't tell you why they want to meet, it's an automatic no. Yeah. Because usually it's a trap. They jump you. But I want to say this real quick on that for anybody that's wondering. We care for everyone, whether yeah. they're a member or not. Yeah. You, if we get a call that they say, hey, our friend Joe was in a car accident and he's hanging by a thread, would somebody go visit? Yes, we care for all. We disciple everyone that wants to be discipled. But I'm talking about mentoring and coaching. Yes, yes. Mentoring and coaching, that's higher up the food chain. And I think about Jesus fed the multitudes. He ministered to the 70. He brought the three into special moments. Right. And he was okay with one, three, 12, 70 multitude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He was okay with these people get this, these people get this, these people get this. And that's what I meant by that. Like I, we, right. we would never like, well, let me check your record here and see if we're going to the hospital. Right. No, we care for yes. everyone. Mentoring and coaching is a different level. 100%. When we talk about the power of a no, 
how do you process things that you need to say no to as a leader that are initiatives that other people are excited about? Because most of the topic that we've been discussing has been the power of a no with your schedule or with your time. Um, and there's probably more things that you have to share around that. But when it comes to somebody presents an idea to you, someone mm -hmm. in the church says, hey, I want to do this. We should do this. We should start a, a this type of ministry or we should do right. this this trip to this country. or and, and you've, as a leader, you realize it's not the right decision. Or maybe it's a staff member that says, we want to do this event and we think it's going to reach our community better. And you say, no, there's a power in that no as well. But sometimes now it's not just your calendar, it's disappointing somebody else. Yeah, oh boy, I have so many thoughts on that. So I'll start there. Um, you want to let your staff know, is it a no for now or is it a no for never? Because sometimes it's the wrong time. It's just no for now. Like, hey, the budget's tight or no, if we do that, we don't have the infrastructure to retain that. It's no for now, not no for never. But then there's times where you got to say it's no for never. Like we're never going to do that. Like it's, it's, we're never, it doesn't match up. We're not doing that. Um, and those are hard, but you got to explain the why then. And it's kind of goes back to like good parenting. You know, you would say, dad, can I have this? And it's, it's easy to parent and say, no, we don't have the money for that. Well, when you do have the money, cause I remember once saying that to you, I said, no, we don't have the money for that. You said, yeah, you do. You have that plastic card. You said it. And I was like, look at this. The kid knows I got a credit card right here. I said, no, that's money we have to pay back. We do not have the money for that. But then I thought, what am I going to do when I have the money? And by the way, the hardest parenting is when you have the money to do whatever your kids would want. And you can't just say, no, we don't have the money for that. The hardest parenting is, no, that doesn't align with what we're doing. And here's why. So same thing with your team. No, we have the money for that. But here's why we're saying, no, that doesn't align with what we're called to do. That doesn't align with where we're going. And you've got to explain the no. So that's part of what I was thinking about when you were bringing that up. And then, um, you know, I'm looking at when people invite us to be on the journey. Um, I There's a tendency to want to say no to things that are ecumenical. And, you know, all the churches in the Twin Cities are getting together and we're all going to pray. And you're like, no, I got enough prayer. I don't need it. But then you got to ask yourself, wait a minute, I'm part of the body of Christ. Do I need to be there? to show that we are part of this. Or we did um, uh, the big youth event in the U.S. Bank Stadium, 40-some thousand teenagers, a couple thousand people got saved. It was just so much fun, and it was we did it. We had this huge event, and we had the largest pillow fight on Guinness World Record. I mean, it was just, it was, but people got saved. It was, it was something we couldn't do, and we had Justin Bieber, like, is filling the stadium, and we had more than Justin Bieber. I'm like, yeah, the church is in this world, too. Um, I asked myself this, is do I need to say yes to this because we couldn't do this without them? We, they really need us to say yes and not no. Like if you say, hey, we want to have a youth evangelist in and he's going to do a service in our church, you can do that with or without us. But if you want to rent the U.S. Bank Stadium, now my no needs to turn into a yes, provided that it aligns, like it's not crazy or, you know, um, but I have people all the time saying, hey, should we do this event in our city? And I'm like, can you do it on your own? No. Do you think it's going to move the needle? Yes. Do you think it'll help the body of Christ? Yes. Okay, say yes to it. Mm -hmm. So those are ways that I'm looking at yeses and nos when people present things. But the other thing I've learned is um, if you have a strong vision, you can go back to, listen, we already have a vision. We're giving this much to Kingdom Builders. We're doing these trips. We're doing this. We've got, now you can apply to be on next year's, but this year is full. You can apply for next year. Mm -hmm. But most people don't have vision and they're like, sometimes people are throwing you things because they don't see you doing anything. So they're like, do it, do something. Well, and one of the things with saying no to initiatives or people is when you blame something that isn't true, just like you were talking about with, with we don't have the money for that. Right. If that's a lie, then that is a lie. And you're, it is you're, a lie. you're abusing that phrase or that message to your kids. And eventually they're going to get resentful because they know that's not true. You know, you can afford that. And versus describing, no, the value. I, someone approached me at a conference a couple weeks ago and they said, hey, I had a missionary come up to me and they were really mad because they said that 
they don't like kingdom builders the way you teach it. And I said, well, did they learn it for us? Because we're the number one missions giving church right. in the AG. I don't, I don't know why they would, if they're a missionary and they don't like our, what we teach. He said, well, they approached churches and said, hey, would you support me as a missionary? And they said, no, we do kingdom builders. Right. And I said to him, I said, the reason why they said that was not because of our kingdom builder strategy. It's because they're blaming kingdom builders so that they don't have to say yes to them because they don't want to tell them the real reason why they're not saying yes, which is either they don't believe in the country they're serving in, they don't like them as a person, they don't know them well, and they're just not convinced. They're, they didn't give a compelling appeal or whatever it is. Yeah. And I think it's dangerous and damaging if you use things as cop-outs and say, oh, I don't do it because of that, when that's not the real reason, because then people come up to me at a conference and they get mad at me. <laughs> I agree with you, and now I'm going to use the exact opposite side of that because here's what it made me think of. Um, I use our elder board as an ability to say no. So I submit my travel to them, and like, okay, so here's what they said. They said, uh, Pastor Rob, we have you know 9,000 people on a weekend. When you travel to a church... If it's not bigger than 9,000, you're actually preaching to less people on the weekend than you would if you stayed home. But if you think it's going to move the needle for the kingdom of God, preach to as few people as you feel like led to. Um, okay, so I was like, great. And then I said, hey, could you guys do me a favor? Take away my power to give away kingdom builders money without talking to you. Because everywhere I go, people say, can you give our ministry $100,000? Can you give our ministry $200,000? And everywhere I go, and the issue is we probably could do it. But I don't want to have that power in Cairo, Egypt, to just give away $200,000 without talking to you. So will you, like, intentionally take away my yes and make it a no until I talk to you as the board. Yeah, but the difference in that is that we have a vetting process to where you no, say, submit that here, and there's a good chance they're actually going to get a good amount of funds, maybe it's not the exact amount, that they submit the vetting process, they go through it, and then we end up funding and supporting them. And you've set a real boundary for yourself, but the other people are just using it as a blame, and there's no resolve. Right. And... and it's our, they're blaming us. They're not right. taking responsibility. Right. In your no. case, you're saying- this I am is using the right way, but I, you're right. Some people are just too afraid to say no and tell the reason. Like, and they're, e like even, I mean, you've shared on the podcast before of different people where you say, this is not the right job for you, and this is a better fit for you, and it's better for them long term, right? right? Instead of the power of a no is very important because Absolutely. You, some people need to hear no, and they need that- that part of their life that says, oh my goodness, I've said, people have said yes to me my whole life and they've enabled me. And then now I finally get a no and I, oh my goodness, it shook me up. Sometimes that's the, the thing that people need to hear. It's true. It's true. I'm thinking about a no. I, just, as yeah. we've been talking about this, I'm thinking about a no that I gave you over my life. Uh, we were on the missions trip. And for those that don't know, when our kids turned 13, we let them pick where the missions trip was going to be. And you picked Argentina. And we go to Argentina and we're doing a construction thing. And then they find out that I'm a mega church pastor and they've got a Bible college with all these Bible college students there. And they come over and they said, uh, hey, um, we heard that you have a large church. Is that true? And I said, yeah. And, and they said, would you mind, instead of doing bricks, could you please go teach? And I said, that's not my decision. I said, I'm here on a father-son missions trip with my son, Logan. And he has the power of the no or the yes. You have to talk to him and tell everybody what happened. Yeah, and I said, he's no good at construction anyways. He's probably better off teaching. So yeah, you can have him. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go in the morning, teach at the Bible school, then have lunch with you guys, mm -hmm. and then go in the afternoon, teach at the Bible school, and then have dinner and stay mm -hmm. at the door. But I was like, it was your, if you just said no, I'd have laid bricks. But it was funny that you're like, that's not his gift. Yeah. He's terrible at this. <laughs> um, when, now, even now, I, I joke with people whenever we're at a conference, this just happened just the other day, but people come up to you, they say, hey, can I yes. get you to speak? Or, hey, could you do this? Or how do I get into this event? And you've started to point at me because I... I have become your no person, you just have. like I was at 13 years old in Argentina. I've now done that at you 27. Perfected it. <laughs> I perfected it. But I become your no person because once, no joke, you said yes to two separate events at the same at the same 
conference like, conference on the same dates within about 20 minutes of each other and i was i was observing it yeah, and i just a, i was error. like what is happening and so now i want to say yes to everything <laughs> and i really do want to help and so it's it feels terrible because here's the what's going on in my mind i want to say yes to this person i so want to do this now i don't know my schedule but i don't want to tell them no right now cuz i want to say yes but I can't say yes, so I say, we're going to have to look at the schedule, we're going to have to get back to you, but I want to. And I've learned this. The Apostle Paul, when he's writing his letters, he says, you know how much I long to be with you. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will allow me to get there. I, I, I want to be with you, never doubt that. And that brought me so much comfort because here's the Apostle Paul saying, like, I want to be there, I want to say yes to you, but I don't know, I, I, I'm probably not but do you know my heart? Like, I want to be there with you. And so I'm trying to tell everybody, like, that's my heart. Never doubt it. I even tell our campuses, never doubt my heart. I want to be at every campus every weekend. I just can't. And so I'm thinking, I want to say yes to you. And then I've had to have other people that say no for me. And right now you're one of them. My personal assistant is, and I want to say this, my very first personal assistant, maybe my second one, but anyways, early on, um, had a strong mercy gift and mom, there was a picture of our family there and whoever was helping me in the interview said, Hey, do you see that picture of his family? Your mercy needs to be directed to them, not the person on the other line of the phone on the other end of the phone that wants his time. You got to hear them calling at the same time. This other person is calling and know that they have priority you know, yeah, and it was put, just, weigh them against each other versus weighing the problem against nothing. Just against time. Yeah. And it was like, wow. So my personal assistant said, no, mom can say no. Mm -hmm. You've learned to say no or to just say, he can't do it. Like I've watched it. I've said like, I would love to. And then you're like, he can't. I just he don't cannot. have, I, I don't <laughs> yeah. have the same like level of yes in me. And so I've just accepted that. And maybe it's wrong, but I've just accepted that I can be that person at a conference. I just, again, I just did it the other day. And he's like, well, can you come? I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, it's just not going to work. It's funny because at church <laughs> at the conference we had the other day, they're like, we're in Corpus Christi. Have you ever heard of two or 18? We have 18 holes of golf that are just like the famous holes. Hey, that did actually sound cool. And I was like, and they're like, we could get you. And oh. <sighs> Yeah, I I would I would love I would love to do everything because and, you're because you're like I think you are the yes man because you love to you can see yourself in that situation enjoying it. Oh yeah, like you hear that story and you go, I can see myself having a blast. Oh yeah, you know. But it's like the opportunity cost that you. I mean, you. I've said this to people. I don't know if I said it on the podcast before, but in the last two years, your requests have tripled. I think, mm -hmm. and so I'm. I'm sometimes, I mean, I feel bad saying this. Sometimes they don't even get to you because I just oh, tell I Molly, I'm like, no, no, we can't even give that to him because he's going to want to say yes. And I, he can't. And I will literally like do the worst travel arrangement yes. ever to make it. I'm like, yes, I will fly from Singapore back to Florida, back to California, back to Minnesota, all within 13 days. And that's not a joke. I'm You're, really doing yeah, that. Yeah. I'm literally doing, you know. Yeah. So like when you, yeah, I just want to <laughs> let's put, let's finish your list before we wrap up because we could talk about this for a long time. But I, yeah. I want I don't want people to be like, ah, we didn't finish the list. Well, yeah, let me see what else is on the list here. Um, oh, you got to pray. Does it move the needle? Like, does this does this align with it? You got to pray. There are times where God's like, you have to do this. Um, and it's not just logical. Sometimes it's illogical and you're like, I have to do this. Yeah. You shared before when superintendent asked you to drive two and a half hours to the prayer meeting and then drive two and a half hours back yep. on the same day. Yep. No. And then, um, I, I, I have one more here, um, which we kind of talked about with you, but give your family permission to veto. Like, I know that you guys would say, no, you need to go. That's that's going to help. That's going to be good. And it felt good to be able to say I was being sent by my family versus, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I don't even care about them. Um, and then um, 
that was kind of all that I had on there. Um, and then the other thing is, um, I've, I've had to learn to, can anyone do this? Could I send you anyone? Uh, can a specialist do this? Can just I do this? That's how I've been learning how to say yes and no. Um, but there's some people out there that are like, you didn't answer my question. I, you, it sounds like you still struggle with saying no. I do. I do struggle with saying no. Um, and I don't know that that's ever going to change. And so these are parameters and guidelines that I've done. And then I would say this, this is probably a good spot to kind of wrap up or unless you got something else, but apologize when you have said yes to too much and you should have said no. And then don't just apologize, change, put things in place. Like look at our solutions list. I'm like, yes, no weekends. I'm submitting it to my elders. I asked my elders to handcuff me on how much money I could give away. Um, I gave you permission to say no. Um, there's other people that, like you say, you don't even send me things that don't even make my desk. So apologize if you've said yes to too much and you should have said no. And then put in some system or safeguard or strategy like what I've done to be able to do that. Um, it, I, I would say for me in my seat as somebody who I don't struggle as much with that. Um, there's, I, I still do. I mean, I, I think travel is something I enjoy traveling. I enjoy doing things like that. But as the person in your seat who is the one saying, you know, maybe there's an assistant listening or an executive pastor or a board member that's listening and they say, I'm the one that's helping, helping them say no. For me, I... I really try to put it through the filter of what your mission statement is. Yeah. And talk to Molly, your your assistant, and really, really weigh it heavily, not because I'm trying to solve a calendar thing. I weigh it more in the heart of your ministry. And so if like there was an event that actually didn't work at all on your calendar, but I was like, this is something I really think he's gonna want to do. We couldn't end up making it work, but we really tried to make it work because I knew that that would be the heart of it. So you've given me permission because you know that I know yep. as good as anybody what you're going to want to say no to and yes to. And I'm not going to get it perfect, but I just I would encourage those who are listening to be be careful who you give that veto power to, but then when you do, you got to trust them. And then if you if you if they're vetoing things and you don't trust them anymore, then that means they probably shouldn't have got the veto power in the first place. And so I just think my goal is to have your calendar be full of things that are as best fitting in your mission statement as possible and impacting the most amount of people with that multiplication. And it's a balance, it's hard. And again, I don't control it like with the iron fist. No. It's more the the speaking requests that come into my my world, but um, you're, you're a recovering yes <laughs> and you shared some good insight with us on how you've helped yourself. And, uh, I, you know, you're, it's going to, it's never going to go away. I don't think you want it to go away. I don't. And now, cause you know what, again, going back to what I started with, I'm so grateful for what Jesus has done for me. I want to build his kingdom. And if it moves it forward and doesn't hurt me or my family, I want to say yes. And I, I think about the other day they called me for the called conference. Mm -hmm. There were 650 teenagers wondering if they were called by God. And they were doing a three o'clock in the afternoon conference. Their guest speaker had to cancel and they called me last minute. And, and right after church, you drove I was up right, right after church. I got in the car, drove up, had two of our youth pastors with us, spoke there, came back and flew out the next day. And mom looked at me and she goes, why are you doing it? I said, it really will build the kingdom. Mm -hmm. it, I said, I, as much as you know, I like to say yes, I wanted to say no for selfish reason, reasons and just sit around the house today. But I'm saying yes, and I'll be a little more tired tomorrow, but this builds his kingdom. I got to do it. And she's like, go do it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the title of this episode could be the power of a yes as well. It's true. Um, but our no's allow us to say the yeses so that we can build his kingdom. That's true. Thank you as always. And until next time, thanks for talking church. 
Hey, thanks so much for listening to Talking Church on YouTube. If you like this podcast, would you like this video so more people can find it, as well as leave a comment. We'd love to know what you liked about this episode, what was most meaningful to you, as well as other topics you'd love to see in the future. And of course, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an episode. We have awesome episodes coming up. I also want to send you an invitation to River Valley Conference. It's July 8th and 9th, and we are in for an amazing treat because we have Sammy Rodriguez coming. If you never heard him preach, he is a preacher of all preachers. He's coming. We have Dr. Alan Tennyson coming back, who's going to share his theology wisdom. We have Johnson and Jenna from Elevation Church that are going to be leading worship. And uh, we're just so excited for all that's going to happen. Of course, Pastor Rob will be there. I'll be there. We'll have m amazing breakout guests as well. So if you have not signed up, sign up for River Valley Conference. And uh, we hope to see you here in July. And we hope to see you next week on next week's Talking Church episode.